Well, so this might be the moment you've all been waiting for. We're going to script the first level uh, feed analyses. So hopefully you didn't bother doing the GUI for everybody because this is going to be way faster. So the main player today is this design.fsf file. It holds everything that is necessary to set up the feet GUI and it has all the information that feet needs to run. And it's just a simple text file. So all we need to do is to create a template design.fsf where the key things we need to change is typically things like the run number and the subject number. We will um, set up the file so we can do an easy search and replace. And then I typically fill in wildcards for the search and replace. I'll explain why I don't just um, use what's in the actual file. And um, yeah, then you write a script to do the search and replace. So sed can work fine if you're using a shell script. I have a Python option that I'll show you that I've been using and it works fine as well. And then you do run it using feet design.fsf. I've left this out of the script that I'm showing today because I'm assuming, I'm hoping most of you aren't running these on one computer. I'm hoping that you're using a parallel computing system and typically those require um, kind of a, a, a launch file of, of some type to launch the job. So sometimes, I'm uh, one, one place I worked, the way that that file looked was if I had 100 feet analyses to run, I would have a text file, a simple text file that had feet and then the design.fsf, it would be that 100 times, but with the, they weren't all called design.fsf, but design underscore sub one dot fsf and so on and so forth. So anyway, I've left that part out, um, but this is the command you need to actually run it. So you put that wherever you want it. If you're running it on one computer, I'm sorry, um, but then all you have to do is put it in the loop. You'll add it into the loop that I'm showing you today. And then your computer will be hijacked for a very long time until your feats are all done. Okay. So let's go to the script. Well, before we get to the script, let's look at an FSF file. So here's one. Um, actually, it's a slightly different data set, but it's the same setup. It's open fMRI data. And you basically, a uh, good way to do this is to go through the GUI and take note of all the things that change from subject to subject. So for example, the subject number will change. And in this case, I probably could get away. Remember I said we're going to make wildcards. I bet I could get away with searching for sub 001 and replacing it with sub and then the proper number. Uh, likewise, oh, this one didn't have multiple runs, but the DS008 data do have multiple runs. So um, you also have a wild card for that. Uh, one thing that does change for this one is the number of time points. So you have to be careful that your wild card doesn't match something that's in here that you don't want to change. So this was, I changed it a second ago. This is what it originally was, 245. But for this data set, it turns out that the number of time points varies from subject to subject. And if you don't put the right number in here, it fails, which is really annoying because when you load the data into the GUI, the GUI is like, yeah, I know how many time points there are, but suddenly FSL is like, ooh, the file was wrong. I can't count time points. So no big deal. We'll put a wild card in here, but we don't want to use this because then we're going to break the file because this is exactly what needs to be here. Um, so I just do NTPTS, which is not MPTS, because if you change this to something else, the feet analysis will fail. And then you just go through and check everything else. Typically, um, another place you'll need to change it is the, um, the bold data, obviously. So for, if you have multiple runs, you might want to replace these with run num or do a search for run uh, 001 and replace it with the correct run num. And maybe the subject number. Um, and then I just write down on a piece of paper the things that I will need to replace so I remember the what I changed in this file. And then you'll have something like this, like this template FSF where I've put sub num in place of 001 and I've also replaced the run num or with an and an not run num but the number of time points with NTPTS. So the Python script I have is actually it's set up for D the DSO08 data 
So um, the study directory will be wherever your data lives. So this script is set up specifically for the DS008 data on my computer, and part of it is almost guaranteed to break on your computer. So I want to go over that really quickly. So you have to import these two libraries, then um, this is a directory where I'm going to dump all my FSF files. You don't need them after it runs, so I like to put them into a single directory so I can just go and delete them once I've run my feet analyses. So it's also where I put my template file. So I run that. I don't even know if that's a real directory on my computer, but then um, the subdirectories, I use glob glob to grab those. So the cool thing about glob glob, I could create a loop that loops through all the subject numbers and all the run numbers, but this will have it. And a cool thing is because some subjects don't have three runs and this will automatically, um, it just automatically takes care of everything. Or, ugh, I know I spelled wrong. So for example, um, Subject 11 only has two runs. So if I had created a loop that, that looped through all the subject numbers and then looped through one, two, three, because most subjects have three runs, I would have had errors for subject 11 and subject 12 because they only have two runs. Oh, FYI, subject eight's a little wackadoo, so just toss subject eight. There's something weird with their data, with their onset files and um, the correct onsets can't be recovered, and I don't know, they only have one run anyway, so I, I think something's wrong. So if you're doing the DS008 data, ditch subject eight. So anyway, I love glob glob because it grabs exactly what I need. So now what my loop is going to do, because I need for my search and replace, I need to get the subject number, and I need to get the run number for the FSF that I'm creating. And I am going to strip that information off of this path. So my loop will go through these paths. So that's what this is doing. So it's a loop that goes through the subdirectories. And the first thing I do is split the directory according to this delimiter. Oh, um, sorry. I set dir, uh, you didn't see me do that for testing. Before you were here, I did this. So I just set dir to the first one. So then if I split the dir, it's just uh, basically a vector with each thing in it. So now this is what you will have to edit. On your computer, you might have not have this many directories until you got to DS008, but we need to make sure the next part is grabbing this string, the subject string. So I have it in the eighth slot. So if I do that, I get sub 001. If you do split dir 8, you might not. So double check it and edit the code for your machine. Likewise, this part is supposed to grab the run num. So you want to pick this chunk, task 001 underscore run 001. And the next step is going to get the run number and the subject number, which are the same in this case. So that's what this, this is doing. This negative three colon is grabbing the last three um, characters. So you get the subject number, and then you do exactly the same thing to get the run number. Run num. So that's there. So now um, we are going to set up a new. F of, uh, Oh, now we need the number of time points. So I'm using the FSL command, FSL nvals, and then I'm piping in, not piping in, I'm, I'm giving it the, the path to the data. So this is just FSL nvals and then the, the bold data for that subject and run number. And then the rest of this is just basically to grab that information and import it into Python as a variable. So n time is the number of time points. And if you're a Python guru and you know a better way to do this, by all means, let me know in the comments. And then you set this up. This is the search and replace uh, that you're going to do. But I, believe, I believe this is a dictionary in Python. Like I said, I'm not a Python expert. So it's going to replace capital S subnum, which was what I put in my, it's whatever, whatever you put in your design.fsf template 
as a wild card, that's what this first one is. If you left it as sub 001, then you're going to want to do that. And I'm not giving you the template. You need to create the template. My template's not going to do you any good because all the paths are wrong. So you could definitely get away with just, eh, actually, no, this won't work because the subnum I created is just 001. Never mind. You'd have to leave the sub attached to this, which you could do by making this a negative six. Anyway, and then NTPTS, remember we saw that in my template, is going to be re replaced with end time, which is this variable I created. And likewise, her run num will be replaced with run num. And the rest of this is just doing the replacement. This is the template file, so that's the in file. And then the out file that we're going to write, that's what the W stands for, is this file. So I'm creating files that are called design underscore sub and then the subject number underscore run and then the run number. And then the rest of this is just going line by line. It's looping through and it's doing the replacement as defined by the replacements uh, above. So it's telling it to go through everything in replacements and to do the replacement of source and target. And then it writes it out. So that's it. And then after you do this, your FSF directory is going to be all filled up with your FSF files. And all you have to then do is um, you could add the feet command to this loop using the os.system uh, feet and then the design.fsf. Or you can, and you would just do that like, let's see, like this. Oh, man, don't quote me on this. Uh, probably something like this, feet percent, uh, yes, boop, let's see, hopefully that's enough, that should do it, that would be the feet command you'd want, it's within this loop, so it basically would create an FSF file, launch feet, create the next one. But uh, danger of doing this, if you're running this on a Mac or something, is it's going to launch them all at once. It will likely uh, kill your computer. So you'll probably want to set it up just to do a few at a time. I don't think it's going to wait until the feat completes before it starts the next one. So yeah, and if you're using a parallel computing system, you, you could have it write the, I usually add that to the loop. I have it write out to a file, the, um, the launch file, the specific lines of code that I need for that. So hopefully that's all clear. I will give the link to this. Just be careful, you have to edit this. I should put some angry, um, here. I'll add it later that you might need to edit this. Oh my, what's going on with my Okay, and then I'll put a note here too. Anyway, tis it. Thank you very much. Please join the Facebook group or follow on Tumblr or Twitter or all three. And again, if you're a Python expert, you have a better way to do this. If you know how to use NiPipe, pipe up. <laughs> all right, there's my big joke for the day. Well, have a good day.